jump into some questions because I know that that's the whole reason why I'm here. My name is Lauren Lapkus. I'm on Backstage's Instagram. Um, I'm an actor and comedian. I'm an improviser and I was on Orange is the New Black. You might know me from that. I was in the Between Two Ferns movie on Netflix. Um, I have a new movie coming out called The Wrong Missy coming to Netflix with David Spade. I'm very excited about that. Oh, someone's watching from North Macedonia. That's interesting. Um, what else can I tell you about me? Well, my Instagram is at Lauren Lapkus, so you can find that and find me. I've got some questions coming in. I'm going to look at these. Okay. There we go. Does it pop up? There we go. How'd you get started? I got started by doing... Um, improv that was actually where I got my whole career started I started taking classes at improv Olympic in Chicago um, when I was in high school and that was how I discovered my passion for comedy and um, that's where it all started and I did that for many years before getting any professional and it made me more confident and helped me figure out, you know, my voice and who I want to be. So this person said, how did you support yourself while first starting out? So I was a babysitter. That was how I made all my money for many years while I, before I got um, any professional acting work. And that was like the best for me because I was able to create my own schedule with that so I could still go on any auditions that I would get even though they were few and far between. Um, but I often would do jobs that would, I would drive a girl to school in the morning so my job would be from like 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. babysitting her and then taking her to school. Um, and so that way I would have like my whole day free to do stuff and I mean it made very little money but it was just enough to keep me going. This question, how do you get an agent? I feel like this question is a tough one because it can be approached so many different ways. I actually have an interesting story for how I got my first commercial agent. I had no connections really in the business except for just other comedians that I knew, but usually that doesn't really help you that much. Um, and I was on Twitter and I followed a commercial agent on Twitter and he used to give advice. He might still be on there, um, but he would give tips and advice for commercial auditions. And I followed him and at a certain point he tweeted, it's my birthday, the first five people to say happy birthday to me will get a meeting. And so I just wrote happy birthday. And then he's like, you get a meeting. So then I went into his office, which was Abrams, at Abrams agency, which is a big agency for commercials. And I ended up getting signed by him and got um, to do commercials through that when I was first starting. So that was like amazing. But I mean, that's how random it is. I mean, I know people who've gotten agents from doing a play and the person comes to the play or um, through a friend and they recommend them. And I mean, there's really just so many different ways about it, but you should look for all the options everywhere because opportunities arise randomly. Oh. Okay, I'm looking through these questions. This is a good question for right now because we're in such a an uncertain time and we don't know what's going to happen. Um, we have to keep ourselves going. Oh, hi, Phoebe. You saw me at Comedy Banding in Chicago. That's fun. That was a fun time. My family was there. Um, I think the sun is too much on my face. So I think during this time, you know, we have to find ways to stay motivated and keep ourselves busy and for me, I do a lot of podcasts at home and that's a, a fun thing for me to keep me going and feel like I'm still connected to my audience in this time when like, you know, don't have any shows or jobs lined up and don't know what's going to happen. Um, and so podcasting is really helpful for me, but that's something I had already established before the quarantine. So it's an easy, natural progression for me to keep doing that stuff. Um, I think actors, you know, I've seen a lot of things on SAG's website, like uh, workshops and things to do in the meantime while we're waiting for the world to kind of pick up again and there's a lot of 
um, videos and and things that they're putting out for, um, you know, cast certain casting directors. Like, watch this person. And they, they suggested, you know, picking a casting director that you like and then watching all of the things that they've worked on. So that's an interesting idea, I think, because you can kind of get a feel for, like, what certain people, the work that certain people do and um, kind of find, like, exactly what kind of thing you're hoping to do and follow the path to, like, getting to meet that person. I think making a vision board is really helpful, even though it can be really cheesy to some people, but um, that when I was first starting, vision boards were really, really helpful to me, and I would put down exactly what I wanted to happen in my life, and particularly my career, because it was the most controllable element in the sense that I could work towards something. Um, I think when vision boards are like realistic, that's really helpful. You can have a big goal on there, but it's something that you can take steps to achieve, and that makes it possible and it's something that when you know when you're looking at a vision board every day you see like okay my I actually know what my goals are I can see exactly that like the five things I really care about one thing I want to write a movie I want to I want to like get an audition for a commercial I want you know all these things that you can kind of control to some extent or take steps to get towards um I also know a lot of people who take acting lessons and I think a lot of those places are doing um online lessons right now I know UCB my my comedy theater that I perform at is doing classes online for improv and sketch during the quarantine. So it is something you can do while you're home if you have the extra cash, which is a luxury. Um, okay, I'm gonna go to another question here. This is a cute one I just wanna put up because you can go watch my series, The Earliest Show on Funny or Die if you're bored and you want something to watch. It's just a ridiculous show, and there is a an hour-long blooper reel on YouTube, uh, which I think is very entertaining, so check it out. Okay. Okay, how can I get motivated to film self-tapes and practice monologues? Um, it's so hard to get motivated. I think, especially when you, you, know, you have to do it all by yourself at home, doing self-tapes is one of the hardest things. Um, because first of all, you have to have a friend who's willing to do it with you. And oftentimes they can be frustrating to do because you're trying to get it perfect and your friend is like, I don't really care as much as you do. So this isn't that fun. Um, I did a self tape to get cast on Orange is the New Black actually. And it was just an audition that came through my agent and it was when, um, it was before Netflix had streaming shows. So I didn't really understand what the audition was for. I knew that it was like a, I thought it was like a web series. I really didn't know what it was, but um, I did the self tape and I actually posted it on my Instagram uh, when the series ended a few months ago. So you can find that if you want to scroll back, but um, it's, it's so hard to do those auditions because you're performing in a vacuum and you really don't know what the, what, if, the if you're doing the right thing, if this is what the person is looking for, like, it's hard. Um, I think the motivation, and here comes my dog again. I think the thing to do to stay motivated is um, just keep doing it. I mean, keep showing yourself that you can and you can practice. You could do practice tapes at home by yourself, like memorizing a monologue and filming yourself doing it. Because it is really helpful to watch yourself on camera. And I think I was doing improv for so many years, but... My, the, one of the most helpful things I did was take a commercial acting class, a commercial auditioning class, because one thing they do in those things is they, you know, you'll practice the commercial at, by yourself and then you go in and do it like it's a real audition and then they play it back for you and you can see how bad you are, which is really helpful because you can learn a lot from that. Want to see my dog? Hee <sighs> hee, this is Franny. She's a Yorkie Maltese Chihuahua. Just got a lot going on. Okay. Here's a new question coming in. What is the most applicable form of improv for theater or film and TV? Um, I, my answer for that would be long form improv because the, I'll explain the difference. Long form and short form improv. Um, long form is when you do like full on scenes in, and you'll do you and your scene partner or maybe you can do it alone, but usually you and your scene partner or your group of people will perform improvised scenes that um, can be almost like from a play, the kind of vibe of like, it can go anywhere and be about anything, but you're having a conversation with somebody. And 
short form improv oftentimes is more like games. So people will be cutting in or interrupting you or having you restart or um, there are a lot of different ways to do short form. But I, and I mean, I think both are applicable to film and TV and both are really helpful because they help you think on your feet and you get comfortable being on stage or in front of people. You get confident with your ideas. You get comfortable changing to the next thing. If someone, if a director comes over and tells you that you need to do something completely differently, you're ready to do that. So I think both forms are really great for that. Um, but my experience is in long form and it's been so helpful to me to have that experience because I feel like I could, I could rewrite the whole scene right now if you want me to and, and just talk and do whatever I need to make this go a different way. Um, that being said, I know plenty of comedians who do short form who are amazing uh, at doing at bringing that stuff into their um, TV and film work and it's a it's equally amazing skill but I think my uh, experience makes me want to pick long form okay now let's see okay just scrolling through your questions Well, this one kind of is connected, so I'll use this. Um, I feel like my experience, in, okay, the question is, how did your experience in improv help you with on-camera acting? And it helped me so much. It was, I mean, it, first of all, that's where all my training is, so I needed it, obviously. Um, but it helps so much because in the moments, you know, when you're doing a scene, you can get nervous. Like, I feel like, especially when I was first starting out, I was, I would get nervous, um, saying one line in a commercial and it helps you keep yourself focused and one thing that's really great about improv is that the one of the main rules is you know that you just respond to the last thing that was said to you so you're listening and reacting and that's a huge tenet of acting as well so like if you can bring that to your work it really helps because you're able to go okay I just need to I don't need to think too far ahead I, I shouldn't think far ahead because I'll get ahead of what's going on and I'm going to say, I'm going to, if I think far ahead, I'm just going to get it. I'm going to ruin my scene partner's chance of doing a good job as well because they need me to do what, go along with what they're doing. So just responding to what they said, reacting honestly as your character would to what that person said, it is the simplest thing you can do. Um, and it helps calm you down and, and take you out of your head because it's so easy to get nervous or get worried and start thinking like, oh, I messed up that last thing. Oh, wait, I bet, oh, I'm already lost. Okay, so just focus on what the, the person just said to you. Guys, here's my Instagram account, at Lauren Latkus, L-A-U-R-E-N-L-A-P-K-U-S. Go find me. I don't know how to like write it on the screen during this. I don't know if I can. Okay. Wow, someone wrote their question a hundred times and it's filling this whole thing. Don't do that. <sighs> Oh my God. Okay. This is a question. How should I stand out in my online audition on Wednesday for a TV commercial? We are in a tough time because doing online auditions, it's so hard. I mean, it's, it's, I guess it must be similar to a self tape. I wonder if, um, maybe they're doing auditions where the person is like almost on Skype, like they can react to you. Um, maybe that's what, what this person is doing. But, um, my advice for you would be, don't worry about standing out. Just worry about doing your best doing your best because I think sometimes standing out, trying to stand out can be a big mistake because you end up doing something goofy or something that's like completely off putting, I think, um, just out of nerves. So, you know, look your best and just act well. Oh, it's on Skype. She responded here. Okay. Um, yeah, just like, you know, be ready, be confident and just do your best and just be, you know, take your time with the material before the audition and make sure you're comfortable with it. Say it out loud a ton of times. Um, and when it's your time to do it, you'll feel comfortable and you'll be yourself. And I think that's the key because a lot of times people get cast for the thing they don't even know is true about themselves. Like the weird thing about themselves that they hate or something like that. Like, it's just like people are gravitating to something about you that you don't, you can't predict. So trying to like, you know, wear a funny hat to stand out like is not the move. Like just be you and, and when the right job comes along, they'll be really excited that you're there because you're you. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay. 
okay, what is your process in breaking down sides for auditions? Um, I have a pretty simple process. I um, tended to just read the sides a million times. If they send me the whole script, I'll read the whole script so that I know what the context of the scene is. Um, a lot of times, if you just get the scene by itself, you might not know that like your character just had something really dramatic happen and so you should actually be acting this way even though the lines sound like they should be said this way or whatever. Um, so I'll read it a million times and I'll read the whole script if I have that op option. Um, and then I'll what I usually do is I will read it out loud at my house. And if I can get my husband to read it with me, I will. But he doesn't always want to because it's not that fun to do it with somebody else um, if you're not in the mood. And so I'll then go to my audition. Like I'll park like 30 minutes early and I'll just do it in my car at full volume like as many times as I can until it's time to go do the audition and then I'll go in and I'll do it. Um, and no, you can't join the live. Okay. Let's see. Oh, okay. How did you get your, your SAG after card? Um, I got my SAG card from doing a commercial. I got, I did two commercials. So I did a commercial for bing.com, which I don't even know if it's a website anymore. Um, but it was a Google wannabe website or something at the time. Um, it was like Yahoo or Bing, Google, Bing.com. Um, and so for that commercial, I was Taft Heart Lead, which is like the first step you get to getting your SAG card. So it's like you can work without your SAG card, but you, um, you, sorry, someone left a funny comment and I just was distracted. But what's a SAG card? A SAG card is uh, the card you get when you get to join the union, uh, the Screen Actors Guild. Okay, I'm letting my dog out of the room. Go. So... Oh, Bing is still a thing. Okay. Um, my commercial is probably online somewhere. It's a grocery store um, Bing commercial if you want to try to find it. I say the words Animal House. And I also mess those up. On the day of shooting, I managed to be um, so nervous that I uh, forgot the two words I was supposed to say. But Taft-Hartley is what happens when you um, get your first acting job in the union. So they will let you work for look work without joining the union because it costs like three thousand dollars to join the union and it's expensive so they give you one job for free essentially and then the next job you book you are a must join which means you have to join the union you have to pay the dues and the fees and in order to do your next job so um what what's kind of cool about what they do <clears throat> excuse me is that if by doing your first job hopefully it pays enough that it would pay the three thousand dollars for your next job and that can kind of work itself out but that's not always the case and it's a lot of money and so it's a hard uh it's hard because when you really want to join the union but then you know you got to pay three thousand dollars or something it's like this is crazy okay um wow okay i didn't turn the q a off i don't know um it's still on okay how do you suggest getting into acting, especially with this pandemic? I'm 18. Um, hmm. I personally don't know how to do anything with this pandemic, but I can try to give you advice if, like, I, uh, if I think about it. I think what I would do if, let's say, uh, I were in your position, um, you know, this is, a t this is a period of time that we don't know how long it's going to last. Oh wait, I thought that was SAG eligible when you work on a SAG project. Uh, yeah, I think it's I think it is like you get Taft Heart Lead in your SAG E, and then you can do the thing. But I could be wrong. Look, maybe I'm telling you the wrong thing. This is from my memory from ten years ago. Um, everything should be Googled and verified, or binged. Um, I would say you should watch a ton of things. St keep studying. I mean, I think that's the only thing you can really do at this point. It's so hard to start anything new in this time. I feel like I've had things that I wanted to start and hobbies I've been interested in and stuff and I just like can't make myself do it um, because I'm anxious about everything that's going on in the world. But I think, you know, if you're interested in plays, reading and watching plays online, um, 
if you're interested in comedy than like listening to improv podcasts and I mean I'm sure there's podcasts for everything so any specific type of acting that you're interested in I'm sure there's a podcast that is dedicated to that uh that's something I really wish I had when I was 18 was access to podcasts because I think there are so many specific things out there that people are delving into so deeply and you could get so much information so I guess I would just say this is a time to get information and to you know you could work on things in your in your apartment or whatever like if you're like wanting to get into theater acting or wanting to do comedy, you know, downloading monologues on the internet or typing up a monologue that you liked from a play or a movie that you watched online or uh, anything like that. And then trying to act it out yourself and working on it. I mean, it's a tough time we're in, but it feels good to be creative. So I would recommend trying to do things like that to keep yourself motivated. Okay. Scrolling, scrolling. No. I'm looking through these questions. Okay, do you think moving to LA is necessary to be a successful actor? Um, no, I don't think that's true at all. I think there are plenty of cities where there are tons of jobs happening. I mean, New York, Chicago, Atlanta, North Carolina. I feel like I'm, a lot of things are shooting in North Carolina. Um, there are certain states that get tax breaks for shooting movies so a lot of movies will shoot there because it's cheaper for them and then what's great about that is that they get to use local actors a lot of times so I've done a couple movies in North Carolina and Atlanta and both times worked with local actors who um were just cast in the movie and I think that's like a really great way to get in I mean Toronto someone said Vancouver I mean there's so many places where things shoot there's I, I can go on and on but um no of course you can live so many different places. I think one thing that's great about LA is that there are so many more opportunities. I noticed, I, I moved from Chicago, I'm from Chicago, I moved from Chicago to New York and then moved to LA. And I had success in LA quicker, but that's from putting in the years of work in those other places. So it's kind of hard to say how long it would have taken me if I had just started in LA. Um, but when I, I did feel like there were so many opportunities in LA. So it was like, easier in a way to get started because there were more things shooting at all times but I would say you could live so many different places and have that experience <clears throat> yeah someone said the competition is great in New York it's so it's so competitive in New York it's that's that's what's hard like I think in LA there are more jobs you know of all levels so you can hopefully get your foot in the door but look at this person it feels like they're promoting for me what was your favorite scene to film in the wrong Missy out May 13th? It is coming out May 13th, and I appreciate this detailed question um, with information. I uh, I did a movie with David Spade. It's coming to Netflix May 13th. It was so fun because my character is cuckoo, and I get to play this woman who no one would want to hang out with in real life because she's rude, loud. It was very fun. Um... My favorite scene, I can't wait for you guys to see the trailer because that's going to be coming out soon, but um, let's see. There's a scene where I, I like shove strawberries into my mouth and talk to David Spade and that was a really fun one because I kept laughing and kept choking on the strawberries. Um, so yeah. Okay. And David is like the funniest person ever. I can't wait for everyone to see the movie. I mean, obviously everyone knows he's the funniest person ever, but I, he's so great. Okay. This is an interesting question. I mean, this is all just my opinion. Someone said, is Will Ferrell the funniest man ever? He is for sure one of them. Um, he's so funny. Okay. Oh, in Hawaii. Yes, we filmed um, The Wrong Missy in Hawaii last year. Okay. This person says, should I study theater if I want to be a screen actor? I don't think you need to. That's my opinion. I mean, I think this is something that you could definitely ask a lot of different people and you might get different answers. Um, I feel like I didn't study theater. I did improv, which is a form of theater, but it's not traditional like plays or anything like that. Um, and, it was, and it was perfect for me and exactly what I needed. 
Um, so I guess it's just a matter of finding what is fun to you because really that's where you're going to have the most success is doing the things that feel really good to you and that you enjoy because acting takes so long to find success in this field. Like it takes so long. Some people it doesn't, but for the most part it takes a long time and it's not predictable. And so you want to spend the time doing something that you enjoy. So if you enjoy doing theater, study theater and do all of that. If you don't, don't find a different thing that you do enjoy that, you know, involves this hobby and you will be happy because most of the time you're not going to be getting paid and you're not going to be um, sure of your next job. So you want to have something that you care about and that you like doing that you can always go back to and that, you know, also helps your craft. Okay. Let me see here. Oh gosh. Okay. This is a tough one. Cover letter tips. I remember doing cover letters and I got no responses. So I kind of think my cover letter was probably bad. I also think my headshot was bad. Um, this was when I was in college and I was submitting to agencies in Chicago and I sent a headshot and cover letter um, to a bunch of agencies and got no responses. <clears throat> um, it's a tough way to get noticed but I think something that probably would have helped me is um having a headshot that really looked like me and that was a good photo as well I think I picked a headshot that I liked and that I thought was cute but it didn't really look like me and I one of the big things about my picture that was wrong was that I'm like smiling with my eyes squinty and one of my best features is my eyes. So I really messed up, I think, by using that headshot at first because I, I thought it was the cuter picture. But at the time, didn't really understand what my face looked like and what people how people saw me. So even though my friends did not pick that picture when I asked them for their opinion, I still want the one I liked. That's not a good idea. You should let a bunch of people who know you really well weigh in on which headshot looks the most like you and is pretty or whatever like the one that you like but that looks like you and then pick that one and your cover letter I really don't know what to say in a cover letter. I all I know is that I did it wrong so I wish I could help you but really rough someone said headshot color or black and white I say color always I think I think color is the way that we're all doing it now but um it's just better to see what you look like in color why not Okay, let me see. I'm going to keep scrolling. Let me see some of the new questions. Okay. This is, this is a debatable question because I, I don't know and I don't know what's going on. Okay. Um, here we go. Can I post my self audition tape or monologue on Instagram? Well, actually, I was going to say, yeah, do whatever you want. And then I thought, well, no, you can't because you have to know if the, if the stuff you're auditioning for is public or not. And most of the time, anything I audition for, they say, do not post on Instagram. Do not share this with anyone. Don't tell anyone you're at this audition. Like it's all really top secret. And they often will even send a non-disclosure agreement where you have to sign and, and promise you won't tell anyone anything about the audition or the script. And I'm like, no, no one cares that much about this thing they don't know about and they never heard of. But I guess they do because you can't tell anyone. So the answer is no, just to be safe, don't post it. However, if it's an old monologue from something that you're just doing for fun and it's like from a play or something, then yeah, post it. I think that's fine. I have to sneeze, but I'm afraid that I'm going to sneeze on this Instagram live and it'll be really gross. Okay. Someone said, please answer my question. I don't know what it was. I'm scrolling through these things and it's hard to tell. Um, okay. Here's one. This is a fun one. What do you do to boost your confidence? Whew. I mean, it's a hard one because there are so many days as an actor where you have no confidence and 
you feel like a loser and you feel like nothing's ever going to happen. Even if you're successful, I think it's really true that people that you admire who are like super famous or like you think are like the best feel like they have days where they're just like, I suck and I don't know how I'll ever get another job. And it's totally normal to feel that way. Um, but for me, what I do when I feel like that is I try to get out of my head and try to stop thinking about myself because the world doesn't revolve around me and no one cares. Um, so it doesn't feel that great to just think about yourself that much and to get, you know, to feel like a loser. Like it's just, you're, you're wasting way too much energy feeling bad. So I'll distract myself. I'll listen to something, um, and like a podcast I like or some music that really pumps me up or I'll watch a movie or just try to check out a little bit or talk to someone on the phone, talk through some of my feelings on the phone. I go to therapy, which is really helpful. Um, it's hard to have those conversations, but it's helpful when it's somebody you pay to talk to because they, uh, they have to let you keep talking about it, even if it's boring. Um, but yeah, that would be my advice. Try to get out of your own head and don't worry so much about yourself. You're fine. Everyone's fine. Hey, Peter, why don't you type your question again instead of saying please answer my, my question because I don't know what it was. Sorry to get rude. Okay. Um, what moment in your what moment in your career did you think this is happening for me? That's what somebody just said. Uh, I think it happened for me for, honestly from doing commercials and I started to think like, "Oh wow, I'm I'm in a commercial." Like I think um before I was in commercials, before I got any job ever, I almost didn't understand how someone would be in a commercial. Like I didn't really think I didn't really understand how you got to be in a commercial. So that was a really cool moment for me because I was like, wait, everyone in the country, like my whole family is seeing me in this commercial every once in a while. And that's like legit. So that was, that was the first step, I think, to feeling good about doing this stuff. Okay, let's see. I'll take some from the comments here. Why don't we see? Do, 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 do. What is your opinion on working as a background extra? I think that um, I think that's great. I think a lot of people start that way. And one thing that's really, really cool about it is that you get to be on sets and see how things work. Because I think when I first got my, um, my first roles, I had never been on sets before. So I really didn't know anything. And a lot of this career is like fake it till you make it. Like you just kind of like go around pretending you understand what's happening. And eventually you start to understand and then you, you do. But um, I think there's this feeling of like huge nerves when you're first on a set where you just are like, I don't know who that guy is. I don't know what that guy does. I don't know if they're really important and I shouldn't talk to them or I shouldn't ask them something. Like, um, It's a really awkward time. So I think being an extra is a really cool way to start because you A, get paid, you can get your SAG card, um, and you can you can learn a lot about how the industry works and the other people who've been working on shows more than you can give you a ton of answers. I've definitely known that about those people. They, they experience so much, they witness so much and then they can give you great advice. Okay. Yeah. Someone said that's life. That is true. You don't know what's going on. You pretend you do until you do. Um, okay. Someone said, how do you deal with nerves? I get so nervous. Um, yeah, nerves are crazy and they, they can come out when you don't even feel nervous. Like, I feel like I sometimes feel in my head, I'm not nervous. And then I'm suddenly like shaking or something in an audition. And it's so crazy because you're like, I'm not even nervous. Why is my body doing this? It makes it look like I'm so nervous. I'm not even nervous, but I guess I am nervous on some level. Um, I guess I would say like just breathing and trying not to think about it. Because if I think, oh my god, I'm so nervous that I just can't do anything. Uh, and I think actually the improv and acting tool that I mentioned earlier of just listening and reacting is really great in those moments. Like, s just stop thinking your your crazy thoughts in your head about how nervous you are and just react to what the last thing someone said to you was and just be in a conversation and just be present. Um, yeah. Okay. Ooh, this person said, how do I know if an agency is a con? I really need help because I have a callback at four. I 
don't understand how all these callbacks and auditions are happening right now because um, I feel like my world is on, is on pause for the most part, but good for you. Um, if it's a con, God, it's such a feeling if something is a con. It's so hard to know. First of all, you can Google them because maybe there's already people out there who'd be like, this thing is fake. Don't do this. <clears throat> but I think, um, yeah, trusting your instincts. Excuse me. <clears throat> because I've had moments like that in my life too where, you know, you think something seems fake and then it definitely is. Or you think someone's ripping you off. <clears throat> so yeah, I think there are, and there are a lot of agencies and things like that that are scams. So, okay, she said it's online. I mean, I think just Google it. And if you feel when you do the audition, I mean, do it, who cares? And if I don't pay any money, and at the end, if you feel like it was fake or something, just, I mean, move on. But I would say don't give them any money. That would be my, my main thing if you think something's fake. Nobody, nobody who's giving an audition, should you should be paying them. Never. And you should never be paying an agent to get you an audition. The agents take a commission from the work you get. So they don't get paid until you get paid. And they take 10% or whatever you've agreed on. 10% is standard. So I would say um, that's a really great way to know if someone's scamming you. If they're trying to get you to give them money, don't do it ever. Um, this person says she takes small roles that don't pay to start. Yes. Oh my God. I did that all the time. I, mo I did that so much. I was always doing things that don't pay when I first started. Um, and it was great. It's a great experience. Because even, you know, let's say you, you do an unpaid web series or something. You learn so much from doing that. I feel like I would learn like how camera angles work. Um, you can see, then you get, first of all, then you get footage for your reel, which is really amazing. So you can start making a reel of all the work you've done. And I would say for real advice, um, try to put in only the things that look high quality. We're in an age where like shooting on an iPhone looks really good. So it doesn't really make sense to have something in your reel that's like really janky looking because we're shooting stuff on phones that looks great. So someone said he go in detail about reels. So I'll go a little more in detail. Um, reels are so important because they also help you get your foot in the door. I don't know how it's working now with people audition with people submitting for agencies. I would assume there's a lot going on online where you email your headshot and a letter instead of putting it in the mail like I did when um, I started. But you, if you're able to do that and email the person, then you can email a link. So, oh wait, what is this? Backstage doesn't take my application when I pay. Backstage, backstage is legit. You know what I'm talking about when I say things about paying. I'm saying if some weird person online is like, if you want to audition for my film, pay me $50. Like, that's a scam. Um... But anyways, where was I? Got distracted by a comment. Reels. Um, you want it to look good and you want it to be, even if it's short, as much of you talking as possible in the reel is great. It, it's not that amazing to have reaction shots from something else. So we don't need to see you react for like 10 minutes to something someone else is saying. Unless it's like hilarious reacting. But like... Or like dramatic, like you're sobbing and it's like beautiful. I mean, I think as much talking as you can do in the in the footage. And also that might mean that you go out and shoot something yourself. If you don't really have anything for your reel but you need something, you can put together a monologue that looks like it's in a web series that you shot on your iPhone. I mean, there's ways around this stuff. Just to put something on tape that looks legit. I think, um, you know, every once in a while I, I will see a reel from someone and it's like, you don't want to have... You don't want to mix stage performance and TV performance or film performance. You don't want to mix those two things together. It's really confusing to the viewer and also doesn't really translate. You could have one reel for theater and one reel for TV film, you know, on camera work. <clears throat> okay. And do reels have to be from professional projects? No, I don't think so at all. I think you can put something together yourself. I truly do. I think, um... If you write a scene or something and do it with your friend and shoot it on iPhone, that's better than nothing. I don't know. Just some proof that you can act. Um, okay. Someone said that the thing sounds like a scam. I missed the other comment. So if, it's a, if you think it's a scam, it's probably a scam. There's a great podcast called Scam Goddess that my friend Lacey does, and it's all about scams, and it's really funny and interesting. Um, 
Okay, someone said, can you start acting at any age? I think so. I mean, babies do it. Um, so there's that end of the spectrum. But I think it, I think you totally start doing it when you're older. It's such a grind that I would say if you're going to get involved at any age, you have to want to do it really badly. Getting into acting and if you don't really um, care or you think you're going to make money or something, it's not the way to do it. You have to be passionate about it. Okay. <clears throat> Someone, I saw something about accents and it went away. I think accents are great. I don't think that's an issue. Um, no. Okay, I don't see where the question went, but I did skim it. Okay, let's see. And yes, you have to love acting. There is no point in doing this if you don't love it. And there's no point in doing it if you think you're just going to become famous and that's what you want. That's not how it works. And also those people who do randomly get famous and they have no love for it, you can tell. Okay. Let's see, I'll take a few more questions and then we'll start wrapping it up over here. Have you ever received a handwritten letter from a fan? Yes, I have. I think that's very nice. Um, okay, can you talk about your time in Chicago and training and programs <clears throat> and jobs you had? Yeah, so I started doing improv um, when I was in high school at Improv Olympic and I did that for five years. I stayed in school at DePaul and I studied English, I didn't study theater. Um, and I didn't get any professional work in that time. That was, it was also a time where I was going through college and not really pursuing a professional career. But I love doing improv and improv you don't get paid for the most part. Um, so I was not making any money doing that. And I moved to New York and um, continued doing improv at UCB and I was taking classes there. And I started getting um, commercial auditions there. I don't remember how I got a... I didn't really have an agent, I don't think. I think I just... I, I met a manager who came to my comedy show, and she like maybe connected me to a commercial agent. I think that's what happened. But I auditioned for a handful of commercials in New York and never got any. But it was good experience to go on these auditions and, and bomb because I felt the stress of... Um, of what these auditions take. And I remember one time I saw Magda from Sex and the City at an audition. I thought that was really cool. But it was really stressful because um, I wasn't good yet. I had no experience and I really didn't know what I was doing. So I'm sure I got a couple callbacks, but I never booked anything. Um, I'm sure I was not doing amazing work. <laughs> but then I moved to LA and um, started. You know, I kind of explained that story already. So, okay. It says, what are your thoughts on creating an acting Insta, posting mock auditions and stuff like that? I think that's a cool idea. I think you could, I, the reason I like that idea is because I feel like you learn a lot from watching yourself. So I don't know that it has to be a public thing. Um, but I think that just for yourself, as you like start to learn and get better, like filming yourself and watching it back is so important. That was like huge for me with, with taking certain on-camera classes that I took where I would see like, oh my God, I thought I was doing something normal and it actually looks insane. So don't do that again, face, you know, that kind of thing. Okay, this one person says, how do you remember your lines? Um, I, it's, it's hard. I think memorizing is challenging and some people have a harder time with it than others and it's totally um, person to person. But for me, I just have to read it over and over again. I'm usually reading the lines right before the scene every time so that I remember them. Because it really helps me to see the words on the page because I remember things better that way. Um, so if I read it right beforehand, it's kind of like in my brain. I can read it again in my head as I'm talking. Someone said, the hardest part for me is getting in the room here in Chicago, especially when they only bring in a handful of people out of hundreds of submissions. It's so true. I mean, that's the thing. It's it's so competitive everywhere, and it's really hard to get in. Um, I don't really know what to say about that, except that sucks. How many headshots should I put in an email submission? Is three too much? I would say three is the max. If I'm, I don't, I'm not an agent, so <clears throat> I don't really know how they would react, but to me, I don't need to see more than three. I probably don't need to see more than one. I'm just guessing, but the best one is the best one. Okay. Someone says, how do you stand out on all these open calls? I think my, from my experience, what I would say 
judging by what I did wrong in the past, what I think I did wrong, um, just be confident and be yourself and don't worry too much about it. Like don't, don't put the pressure so much where you feel like you come off as desperate. I think that's something that people really respond to negatively in these kind of scenarios when they're casting people. It's like if the person feels really desperate, it just it, it feels bad. So I think it's really helpful to just feel confident in yourself and go in and just feel like you know the material, but it's not the end of the world if you don't get it because it's not, and you, you're not going to get most of the things. So just go in like that with that attitude of like, it's fine if I don't get it, but it'd be cool if I did. And it'll come across and people respond well to that. Oh my God. Someone said, how do you film crying scenes over and over again? I can't. I am not good at crying on cue. Um, so it's hard for me. And I think usually I only get a couple takes where I really can cry. So hopefully you know. One thing that's good advice that I learned is wait for the moment when it's your close-up to cry. You don't have to cry in every take. You don't have to cry in the wide shot. You don't have to cry when it's on them. That's for sure. When the camera's on the other actor, you definitely don't have to use real tears. Um, you can save it for the moment when it's all about you. Okay, well, I'll take one more question and then I'm going to wrap it up. Let's see. Anyone throw your questions out here right now and we'll see what you if I answer it. Q&A page. <clears throat> okay, this is a really important question. Just kidding. Oh, I'm a comedian but can cry on cue. Should I pursue drama? Pursue it all. I think... Um, Comedy training is a really great training to do any kind of acting. Um, I think some comedians are some of the best dramatic actors. Like Jim Carrey, for example. He's so funny, obviously, but he's also an incredible dramatic actor. Because doing comedy, you tap into all of your emotions and you see the world on a deep level just as much as anyone doing dramatic acting. So um, I think definitely pursue both. And someone said, do I still do improv? I'll take that as my last question. Yes, I do. All the time. Um, I have multiple podcasts. My name is Lauren Lapkus. You can look me up. Um, I have a Patreon. Patreon.com slash Lauren Lapkus. Making quarantine content in these tough times. I'm uh, doing lots of improv on my Patreon. I do watch-alongs to movies and TV shows so you can sync up my responses. Um, and like feel like you're watching the show with me. So you can go and follow that. Follow me on Instagram at Lauren Lapkus on Twitter, whatever. And um, this was very fun. Uh, I enjoyed it a lot. Thank you so much for your questions. Thank you for being so engaged with me. It was really, really fun to respond to you guys. And uh, I really appreciate it. I wish you all the best if you're pursuing acting. It's so challenging, but it's totally worth it. And it's really, really fun. My Instagram is at Lauren Lapkus. L-A-U-R-E-N-L-A-P-K-U-S. I'm going to put it in the comments here. And there you go. You can see my name in the comments if you swipe up and follow me. Thanks, everyone. That was really fun. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate your thoughtful questions and even your jokey questions. I enjoyed it. Um, I hope you all have a great day. I'm going to go stare at a wall.